Hey, this is Man Made Mead, and um, today we're doing a specific video. Um, we have, or I've done a video, there are six things that you um, might be making, mistakes you might be making with beginning mead. Um, so now I'm going to go into specifics of certain things. So first off, the first one that I talked about, and the one I'm going to talk about with this video, is picking a yeast that's appropriate for your actual mead. So I'm talking about four different yeasts today. Um, they're all from the Lavlin company. So the big thing with um, I like about Lavlin is in these four yeasts they've covered all my bases I've needed. And I have them all right here except for the Lavlin D47. So to run through, we have the uh, Lavlin D47, which I don't have, I'll picture right here. And then um, the EC1118, the K1V1116 yeast and the Lavlin 71B1122. These are yeast I really like and I would highly encourage you to use just because um, they actually fulfill most of the needs you need. Now there are a bunch of other yeasts and I'm not going to talk about those specifically but the premise of this video will be the same. So to get started, um, uh, I'm going to read, I have some notes here so I've typed a bunch of stuff. I will put the actual um, like a link to these notes in the description so that you can um, follow along if you're a more visual person and need to read it like I am. And to let you guys know right now, I got a lot of this information about these specific yeasts from the um, uh, Meadist, which is a, a website, and I'll link that in the description as well. So uh, first things first, choosing your yeast for your meat is probably the most one of the most important steps. When beginning the process, of course you need your water, your honey, and whatever other ingredients um, you're including in your mead. However, the yeasts are the powerhouse behind the mead, which means that if you are not properly uh, giving them everything they need, they're going to struggle, and you don't want the yeast to struggle. Um, they take all of these ingredients and they make them into the, the smooth and hopefully good flavor that you like so much. You should also choose a yeast based off the ingredients you choose or you want to use, your ideal alcohol volume, and then the temperature range that you can successfully manage and keep the yeast or the yeah the um, mead at over time. So each uh, yeast responds to these variables in different ways, and um, they have different different levels of those things. So and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, let's see. I'll break down these four yeasts um, that I'm using, that I'm talking about, and then we'll talk a little further about them. Um, so to break, break these down, each yeast has a different uh, capabilities with certain meads. So for example, we have some yeasts that suit best for just a traditional mead. And in this case, the traditional ones are, I don't have a D47 with me, but the Lavlin D47 and the... Lavlin EC1118. These two are incredible for just a traditional mead. They keep the um, honey flavor well, and uh, it's just, I, I've had a lot of success, and I think a lot of other people had, have had success. Then you have the other side of things, where if you're making a mellow mel, or, um, and a mellow mel is a fruit mead, um, if you are unfamiliar with that, um, you can use the other two that I'm talking about, and they are the Lavlin K1B1116 yeast and the 71B1122. These two are great for mellow mels. Now, they can be broken down in two categories. The K1B1116 is great for a lighter fruit. If you're doing apples, uh, strawberry, strawberries can be probably a little, uh, pretty good for this, but lighter stuff. And then the 71B is great for darker fruits and cherries and strawberries, excuse me, blueberries, blackberries, stuff like that. Um, so uh, the actual um, traditional meat ones, all these will ferment to moderate to fast. Um, some of them will go faster than the others. And then they will actually create a moderate to dry meat. So it's pretty good. Uh, Getting specifics now. Lavlin D47, which I'm gonna put right here, uh, is a ferment at a moderate to fast pace with a little foaming. Gives way for the honey, uh, honey flavor to pop out, but requires more nutrients. So it's suggested that you add 
nutrients to it. Now, I will suggest that you add nutrients to all of your meads because your meads or your yeast absolutely need as much nutrient as possible um, to survive and do their best. And I would use that this the D47 during a, a traditional mead. The the specs on this mead, like I said, they have a specific um, a specific uh, temperature range, and then of course pairing for for fruits and whatnot, a fruits or just traditional mead, and then also an alcohol uh, tolerance. So the alcohol tolerance for the D47 is 14%, meaning it will stop at 14%. You can't expect anything more than that, and that's fine. Uh, but you just have to plan for that. And then the temperature range is kind of small. It's 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So you need to maintain the mead, the yeast that you use, excuse me, the mead with this yeast at that temperature for them to properly um, work their way through. Next is the Lavlin EC1118. This one is great for a traditional mead as well. Um, and there is always information on the back of these that tells you what temperature to actually heat and hydrate these at. So these uh, are anywhere between 100, 104 and 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, all three of these actually will sit between there and that's probably the best way. So keep your yeast at that temperature when you are uh, heating them up and, and putting them with, or hydrating them, excuse me. So EC11. Uh, this one uh, ferments at a moderate fast pace and allows for uh, a higher alcohol tolerance. So it's great for traditional mead, but the alcohol tolerance is a little bit higher, which is nice. It has a wider temperature range, a quite a wide temperature range. Um, the only difference is this one might take a little while longer to age. So uh, the specs on this one, the alcohol tolerance is 18%. You can go up to 18% for this guy. The temperature range is great. It's 45 to 95. I love this one because you can, you know, you don't have to be really specific. Sometimes it's hard to keep things at exactly 59 degrees or exactly 62 degrees. If you live in a house uh, where, you know, you're heating or like uh, summertime, you know, you don't want to cool things down a bunch. So this is great for a, a good and wide temperature range. Now we break into our mellow milk category um, that pairs the yeast that pair well with that. Starting with the V1116, uh, this yeast is one that ferments fast, at a fast pace, and does not impact the honey taste. Uh, it's best suited for melomels because it keeps the fruit flavors within the mead. Uh, it, this yeast, though, requires a higher nitrogen environment, which is often fostered at, uh, with melomels naturally, just as they are going through the fermentation process. And it has a high alcohol tolerance and boasts a wide temperature range. So um, the alcohol tolerance for this guy is 18%, and then the temperature range is 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I love this, this one. I've used this for probably uh, seven or eight out of my 15 meads now, and it's been wonderful. It's worked well, um, and I think it's something that uh, everyone should use. I, I really... Um, I'm a proponent of a lot of Lavlin products because of that. The very last one we're going to get into is the Lavlin 71B. This one's also um, for a melomel. Now, to go back to what I was saying about the V1116, that one's great for lighter fruits. Um, things like apples, if you are doing, um, let's say, pear or peach or something along that line where the, uh, the mead is not the darker fruits can have a, a harsher acidity sometimes. So these um, provide a good level for the acidity, or for lack of acidity, I should say. So pair them well with apples, lighter fruits, things like that. Now, um, 71B is great for darker fruits, like your blackberries, blueberries, um, anything, anything like that, cherries, it, it works very well. And this yeast, the 71B, uh, is a moderate paste fermenter, and it's best suited for melomels that are dark. Um, the reason why, specifically, this yeast can metabolize the maltic acid that the darker fruits create and smoothly allow them to, um, to kind of incorporate themselves within the mead, and ultimately it creates a smoother and more aromatic taste. So, well, basically that just means Hey, these, this works well. This takes the um, the natural ingredients that these darker fruits put out and makes them less harsh. Um, it has a fairly high 
alcohol tolerance of 14%, and then a great temperature range as well, 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. These two are, are I've used quite a bit. I like them a lot. They're great for mellow mills. Um, and I've done a lot of mellow mills. I do some traditionals, but I've done a lot of mellow mills previously. So now that we've talked about the four of those, the four that I really like, um, going back to just general actual mead uh, and yeast stuff, the most important thing you have to do when picking a yeast is know what your end goal is. If you want to create a mellow mill, then you want to pick a yeast that's going to best ferment with that mellow mill. Um, now, if you're a beginning mead maker, I would go with something basic like, you know, before you start getting to, this is only four options, so it's not bad. It's not like having to pick, having to pick a, between a bunch of, excuse me, but the K1B116 has run well with me in most general cases. And then the EC118, oh goodness, 1118 has done well for just the traditional needs. So if you're just trying to get started, that's great. And I understand that this can be overwhelming, um, but it will get easier over time. Um, you want to pick one that has a great, if you're beginning, a good uh, temperature range because the temperature range can, can absolutely be a killer. If you keep your house hot, your yeast are not going to function. Um, and, or function as well, I should say. If you keep them at optimal temperature, they will have an easier time actually functioning and getting things done. So uh, keep them at a, great, a good temperature and then feeding your yeast, which will be another uh, video in itself because that's a long, long topic to talk about. Um, don't be afraid to try things and fail. Um, if you're beginning, you only need, let's say you're doing a one gallon to three gallon batch, you only need one packet of five grams of yeast to um, make exactly what you need. If you're trying to do a six to 12 gallon batch, then you might need two, then you might need three, but don't overdo it with yeast. These will uh, go through and they will reproduce and populate and do everything. And so if you are just putting more yeast in, you're gonna create the problem of actually racking over, um, losing your uh, mead when you start to rack it over. You don't wanna do that at all. Um, the journey to making mead is not always a smooth one. You might hit a few bumps. You're gonna make mistakes. I made mistakes. I have. I could probably do a highlight reel of all the mistakes I've made. Um, but in the end, you're gonna create a product that you really like. Choose your yeast wisely. And if you're starting out, choose between these four. If you are way more advanced than me, which a lot of you guys are, then go with whatever yeast bit you've been using. But um, make sure you're just picking the right yeast for the job. So. I hope this has made some sense, cleared up some, some things. I wish someone had, uh, I wish I'd watched a video like this whenever I first started. It would have my, I might have made a few, a fewer, few, fewer mistakes over time. Um, but those mistakes ultimately were not terrible. So thank you for watching. Uh, there will be another video for a different one of my numbers of the six. So this one was about yeast and just choosing your yeast. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments, leave a like, subscribe. I'll have lots more content for you guys, um, but I love communicating and seeing what you guys have to say. And I absolutely gain a whole lot of insight whenever you guys end up uh, talking and saying things, it's great. So thanks for watching, see you next time.